good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time it is, wherever life finds you. My name is Mike, and we are on a mission today, dear viewer. You and I are on a mission to clean up the mean streets of a big city in America. We are playing a game called Police Stories, and it's a game I enjoy quite a bit. We're going to run through it, I'm going to do a full playthrough, and we're going to have a good time. So, without further ado, let's get started. This game came out in 2019. It was developed by a dev by the name of Mighty Morgan, if I'm not mistaken, which I believe is an indie dev. Um, and I think this was crowdfunded or kickstarted, one or the other. But uh, this game has a campaign, which we're going to run through, a quick story mode. It's not too, too long, but we're going to have our fill of it. So we will get started. I have never done the local co-op, so sorry, can't give you any information on that. <laughs> March 1st, 2015. Before we start, I just want to say thank you. You're the only one that didn't just hang up as soon as I told you what I'm researching. Everyone else just disappeared. It's like they really don't want to talk about it. I can't imagine somebody not wanting to talk to a journalist. I just want you to know that it's really important for me that you agree to do this. So, let's start from the top. Tell me about your first day working with Officer Rhymes. Ready when you are. Oh boy. It's quite a cluttered desk there. I should probably clean that up. Of course, I can't, uh, I can't talk myself. There are two difficulties to this game, standard and easy. Standard is standard, I suppose. As you can see, play the game as it was envisioned by the devs. Tactical equipment will be an important part of gameplay. In case you couldn't figure it out from the title, this is a police-themed uh, top-down shooter. Sort of along the lines of maybe Hotline Miami, but very different. Um, this is a very difficult game, which isn't to say that Hotline Miami isn't difficult. It's very difficult, but this is difficult for a different reason, because this is a very tactical game. Um, equipment and tactics and the way you proceed through a mission are very important. It's kind of like SWAT 4, except, again, it's a top-down shooter perspective, so obviously not as deep as SWAT 4 if you've ever played SWAT 4 because of the difference in perspective. It's not as deep, but we're going to jump right into the first mission here. Objectives, neutralize the threat and secure evidence. Jones, Rhymes, dispatch is on the line. Where do you guys go? Anyway, we've got reports of a robbery at the Armadillo Bar and Grill. So we need you two to get over there and check it out. Suspects are heavily armed with multiple hostages present at the scene. So be careful, both of you. Especially you, John. Wouldn't want you to die on your first day. Yeah, I think our player character, it's his first day on the job. Or his first day back on the job. So you can see some details. Suspects total 7, civilians total 3. Mission difficulty 3.5 out of 10. So this shouldn't be too hard. But we're probably going to die a decent amount. Um, there are a lot of gadgets to use in this game, and a lot of different pieces of equipment. I actually just went ahead and reset my save file, so we're going to get the authentic experience here, starting out with basically just flashbangs, medkits, and a lockpick set. As you can see, that's all we got. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if we can equip both of our officers with a single thing like I don't know if I can actually give myself and my partner flashbangs I usually prefer to him to have the flashbangs um, I'll take a medical kit yeah okay I don't think we can uh, so I'm actually gonna go with just the med kit I'm gonna let Jones have the flashbang and the lockpick set and we're gonna run with that September 3rd 1998 Mickey's Diner and I'm not going to skip any cutscenes or anything like that, so you guys can experience the story. So here's what happened that night. I was walking through this really dark corridor, like pitch black. Can't even see the walls. I was walking for what seemed like an eternity, when all of a sudden, I see a door in front of me. I love the art style of this game, by the way. That just looks beautiful to me. I think he's dying. A huge door, you know, one of those big wooden ones. Yes, I'm aware that doors are made of wood. So I walk up to it, open it really slowly, and guess what? There's nothing there. Just an empty room, except for the box. A cardboard box, just standing there in the middle of the room. I love diners like this. I wish there were more places like this in real life. 
Maybe there were at one point. Doesn't seem like there are anymore. Anyway, I walk up to it and I can't stop thinking, what's in the box? Suddenly I notice there's blood on the sides. My brain's almost screaming, what's inside? What's in the box? What's in the box? I'm getting a little carried away with my voice acting here. <laughs> then I finally open it up and Susie's, my wife, Susie's head is inside. It's an obvious reference to Seven here. If you've ever seen that movie. What a dream. Nearly fell off my bed after that one. Moving to a different city is a total mess. We've been unpacking for almost a month now. No wonder I'm having nightmares about it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Your former police academy classmate, not to mention your best friend, was just transferred to your precinct. And that's all the welcome you've got for him? You haven't changed a bit. I love it. <laughs> I hope this little therapy session is over. Damn, bruh. <laughs> Wasting my time here with you actually makes me miss police work. Cold as usual. You know what? I actually kind of missed it. Anyways, how are you? What have you been up to all this time? Well, you know, the usual. Solving cases. Putting assholes behind bars. Becoming the top officer in this crap hole of a precinct. Not acting like a little coward. Damn, bro, you throwing some shade. You an umbrella? Me? A coward? Man, you just told me you were afraid of boxes. <laughs> Fair point. For what it's worth, it's good to see you again. Ah, uh, screw it. I've missed you too, you annoying son of a bitch. <laughs> Here we go! Police stories. Let's get started. Let's really get into it. Now we're getting into it. Wait, weren't we supposed to go somewhere? Dispatch called half an hour ago, John. Damn, bro, you ignoring the radio for a half an hour? Do your job, bro. Come on. Don't be a toad. All right, here we go. Well, that wasn't very nice. Just smashed up a bunch of bikes for no reason. Okay, so as I said, oh, it's going to give me a little bit of a tutorial here. Uh, we don't really need any of this. Okay, as I said, this is a top-down perspective shooter. Um, oh, we have a civilian over here. So civilians are constantly a thing. Yes, it's gonna it's gonna explain everything that I'm about to explain already. Walk up to them and press uh, the action button to arrest them, and that also applies to suspects who have surrendered. All right, so we're gonna start getting into the nitty gritty here. So we have a room right off the bat, this little foyer slash entryway area, very small. There's really only two places that somebody could be as we're looking at this room, either right over here or up here. So we're not gonna need to really uh, go for a dynamic entry. We can kind of just position ourselves rightly. And I'm actually going to have my partner, Jones, cover that, cover that okay. area while I check right. Oh, okay. I can't see the criminal, but I have a feeling Jones is about to light him up. Oh, no, he's running away. Okay. All right, so I'm going to have Jones come back in on me. Now, this room is actually a little bit tricky for basically the second room that you enter in the game. There's a lot of places that somebody could be. If you haven't noticed, obviously, um, you can't see enemies or NPCs unless you're actually looking at them. So, uh, this could be a little bit tricky, but we're gonna be careful about it. Pop the door open. Okay, left is clear. See some evidence up here. We'll get to evidence in a second, but I wanna take this corner very carefully. Okay, free look ahead. Nobody up here, okay. We're good. So, evidence. Um, there's lots of evidence. You get points for collecting evidence. This game is a little bit arcadey, despite the fact that... Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, well, I didn't realize that door was open, but we didn't. Man we managed to not get killed, so that was good. Yeah, so, uh, guy was pointing a gun at us. He had to get lit up. That's how life works, in case you haven't noticed, in case you don't watch the news. Usually I flashbang that room, but that guy decided to open the door and be a dumb arse, so he got lit up. Get down. On the ground, now. As you're moving the level through the level, excuse me, and you encounter NPCs, uh, you can use the action button to shout commands at them for them to surrender. Some of them will, some of them won't. Some of them need a little encouragement. <laughs> Ooh, goodness gracious. All right. Oh man, if we managed to do this level first try, that would be awesome. 
because even though this is a relatively easy level, especially compared to what we see later in the game, um, you can you can die. Like I said, this is very this is a difficult game. It does not take much to die. One round will basically do the job here. All in and stay close. Ooh, that was a little close. Locked doors. Okay, the game is telling us about locked doors. Occasionally there are locked doors. Oh goodness. Okay, not what I wanted to do. Also, there's a guy coming. Cover that area. Roger that. Okay, I thought he was gonna come through the doorway here. Oh, because it's locked. Okay, so earlier you remember I gave uh, Jones the lockpick set. You use lockpicks on locked doors, obviously. And I usually like to have him open the doors so I can kind of stand back and. Well, he pointed a gun at me. Uh, if you shoot uh, criminals who are not threatening you, that will actually count against you. You will lose a lot of points for that. Like that. Don't do that. Okay. Don't shoot civilians either. Well, so much for getting this on the first try. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and not get anything worse than a B in most of these missions because you get a letter grade depending on your performance and your score. Um, yeah, don't do that. Don't, don't shoot random unarmed civilians. I was a little, I was a little too quick on the gun there, as, as you could clearly see. Um, okay. Oh, that door is open. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna give that door up there a wide berth. Oh, goodness gracious! Don't do that either. Try not to die. Try not to die. That's always good advice. Oh, it's gonna, oh no, it's giving me tutorial in the scoring system yeah so you get points for doing things like collecting evidence arresting suspects securing civilians all that good stuff and you will lose points for doing stupid things like shooting civilians in the face locked door right off the bat okay have jones pick it yeah that too um if a criminal, I mentioned this before, but if a criminal is not threatening you and you kill them, that counts as an unauthorized use of force. You will lose a lot of points for that. So try not to do it. Okay, that guy's just gonna run away. Is that door up there? That door is open, okay. Normally when I replay that mission, or this mission, excuse me, this door is closed. I don't know why it seems to be open quite a bit now. Oh! I wounded that guy. I didn't actually kill him. Fall in on me. So we do want to be very careful. Take this corner carefully. Oh, he's right there. Okay, the door is now closed. So we can actually handle this room the way I normally do. Normally, I like to flashbang this room. Just because of the angles, the fact that it's a center-fed room. Get down now! Uh, it makes it a little bit tricky if you want to go in just on your own. Okay. All right, so we actually got that locked down pretty well. I'm actually going to have Jones cover this area while I go for this little uh, kitchenette. Or kitchen, not really kitchenette. All right. Well, he chose to go out that way. Any evidence in here? No. Jones come back. Oh, another one decided to go down the hard way. Yeah, this game is all... Ooh, okay, we're wounded. We were injured. I actually took a round there, but I'm still upright. So I'm not going to reset the mission for that, but um, you will lose points for that as well. Ooh! Well, I didn't need to, because I got shot in the face. I think I was out of ammo. You do have to watch your ammo as well. Um, you have an MP5 here, and uh, weirdly enough, they give you 25 rounds in the mag. I don't know why that is, because the weapon is explicitly called an MP5, which in a standard magazine should have 30, but whatever. Yes. Okay, I'll get to him in a second. Normally, I would not advise leaving anyone, whether it's a civilian or a uh, criminal, out of your sight, but... 
I really did want to get this room cleared first, and I'm going to make sure that we're clear. Nope, we were not clear, but it's okay. We made it work. I'm going to send Jones to get that civilian while I secure this evidence. The weapon, uh, the, excuse me, the enemies will all drop weapons, which are considered evidence, so make sure you're picking up their guns. I'm going to have Rick. Cover that area. Roger that. Suspect spotted. We have a suspect down. Normally, it would be very inadvisable to have somebody stand in front of a door that you're breaching. Uh, however, Jones is so quick on the gun in this game. Police brutality. Yeah, that's also another strategy for getting people to surrender. Um, if they are not threatening you and you are able to safely approach them, you can actually uh, rifle butt them and they will... Sometimes, uh, usually surrender. Usually, if you can get close enough to cold cock them like that, they will uh, go quietly. Oh, okay. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> As I was saying earlier, though, normally not a good idea to have some oh, bugger. Normally not a good idea to have somebody stand directly in front of a door that you're trying to breach. Um, but Jones in this game is so quick on the gun in most cases that he'll actually be able to take anybody out if they're on the other side. If you have him cover the other side of the door and then just pop it open. Okay, got some evidence here. I'm going to have Jones secure that civilian. Have Jones come back in on me. Now I'm going to do what I should have been doing and stack properly on this door and stay back so we don't get shot. Okay, got a guy surrendering here. Anybody else? Nope. Get him hooked up. All right. And once again, I'm going to have Jones cover that area in case anybody comes along to try and ruin our day. Okay, good. This guy surrendered. Cool. Grab his gun. We're going to head around. Oh, well. Fall in and stay close. It's a shame it has to be like that. Actually, I don't care. There are a bunch of criminal scumbags. Gives it gives a darn. Oh, and he left the door open. Really puts us in a bloody precarious position and we're going to have Jones throw a flashbang in or Jones is going to get shot that could happen too we could both get shot no 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 you ran all the way across this place into that room just to get shot by Jones you couldn't have just been a dummy out in the hallway and gotten shot by him all right, we got this. This is going to be our run. This is going to be our run. We got this. I'm going to clear the kitchen real quick. Or I'm going to shoot a guy in the face unprovoked. That guy was provoked, though. He, uh, what is... What, buddy. Okay. Oh, goodness. Uh, okay. Well... I don't know what to say about that. Guy just decided to charge across no man's land there. All right, well, we know there's a guy in this room because we saw him running here, so. Ah, all right, well. <clears throat> Pardon me. There were two guys in there. We don't want to do that. We don't want to shoot people in the face unprovoked. We only want to shoot them in the face when it's provoked. Uh, not happening, buddy. Listen, get that. Going to go grab that evidence over there while I collect the dude's gun, and we're gonna hit this room with a stun grenade. Okay. Okay, nobody really in there, so that's good. Hook that guy up. Have Rune, uh, Rones. Jones, excuse me, fall back in on me and cover that hallway over there. Kitchen is clear. All right, cool. Fall in on me. On the ground now. Good 
kill, good kill. You always want to be careful with this T-shaped hallway. Oh, this guy is Cover that coming through that door right, I think. Uh, dude, where do you think you're going? Yeah, you want to be careful with this T-shaped hallway here. Oh, for exactly that reason. Okay, that could have been bad. But it actually worked out. This room is also one, as I've said, I like to flashbang that room. I'm going to have Jones cover this bathroom here because uh, he's a little bit more... He might be a little bit more stable on the gun than we were. Okay. Green is a civilian. If you see a green silhouette outside your cone of vision, that's a civilian. I think we used up both of our flashbangs, so I don't think... Yeah, if Jones doesn't have any of the item that you're telling him to use, he's just going to basically tell you to bugger off. So... Ooh, that could have been bad. He tried to shoot me at the last second there, but I was able to get him hooked up. Mission complete. Okay. Now, just because it says mission finished, uh, we don't necessarily want to end because there could still be evidence to collect. That's why we still have control over our characters. So we're going to just I'm just gonna roll through here real quick and uh, make sure there's nothing we're leaving behind. We don't want to give up those last couple points. Now, it looks like that's everybody. Okay. Mission finished. We got a B+. I'm happy with that. Um, no penalties. Nobody injured. No unauthorized use of our weapons. Nobody dead. And you can see how the score is calculated. So it's a little bit arcadey, police stories. But it's, uh, it's very challenging at the same time. Freeze. Now, me and my partner here don't have a lot of time on our hands. So don't waste it. Tell us what we want to know. You got it? Yeah, I got it. What were you guys doing here? Um, nothing, really. The plan was to stick around this place for a bit while we wait for one of our guys to call us. Wasn't there supposed to be a robbery here going on? What happened to that whole deal? And then, as soon as he did, we were supposed to be going... Oh. Never mind. Going nowhere. Forget I said that. Going where? Going where? Tell me before I... All right, just stop yelling. This guy's very sensitive. He doesn't like yelling. Warehouse on Amore Street next to the apartment complex. Now, I don't know a lot about it, but it seems that warehouse is loaded with weapons. I overheard guys talking about preparing for something big. Preparing for what? No idea, man. Honest. I've been with these guys for like four months. They ain't telling me stuff. I'm serious. I don't know. Preparing, please, for... I'm telling the truth. Excuse me. Please don't hurt me, man. I don't want... I think he's telling the truth, John. Voice of reason over here. We got a lead. That should get us somewhere, right? Come on, let's check this warehouse out. All right. We got new equipment. A foregrip. And there's our B+. So you unlock new missions and new equipment by completing missions, obviously. You actually need a set number of points to unlock... Um, story missions. So we have uh, 9,200 points or thereabouts. So we can do the next mission, the Stone and Roberts Warehouse. All of the missions are listed here in the story mode. But uh, we'll get to that next time because this video has gone on a lot longer than I thought it would. So next time we're going to do in action at the Stone and Roberts Warehouse. Thank you for watching, dear viewer, and I'll see you next time.